Ladies and gentlemen, competition is always a good thing. It benefits us as end users and the market as a whole. It's one of the reasons that I think most of us have supported AMD and their strives forward in CPUs. It's hard to deny, for example, that mainstream processors have evolved heavily thanks to the efforts of AMD and Zen. But yeah, back when NVIDIA announced the RTX 20 series, alongside that was another important announcement, and that is DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, which, as the name implies, allows you to upsample from a lower resolution to a higher resolution image using... Uh, well, deep learning. And this was a really big thing for the industry, I feel, at the time. And since then, we've seen the launch of FSR, or Fidelity FX Super Resolution, from AMD. While the two companies will, on record, tell you that neither tech is in competition with another, it's hard to deny that AMD did score a couple of major PR wins with FSR, not least of which is that it will run on a wide range of architectures, including AMD's own competition. So, even Intel XESS in the... Uh, <coughs> This means that even the upcoming Intel XE range of cards, which launched next year, should in theory benefit from FSR. But yeah, FSR as a whole has been fairly well received in the industry, and even Microsoft have included it in their SDKs for the Xbox. But that is not to say that NVIDIA's strategy in the long term is not a very good one. DLSS is it's hard to deny, getting better and better and better at upsampling from a lower resolution. And there is also a downside to not just DLSS, but FSR and Intel's upcoming XCSS as well, and that is that it needs support from games developers. And this really brings us to a couple of very interesting recent NVIDIA announcements, which we're going to be tackling in this very video. We're going to start out with NIS, and then we're going to move over to an update for DLSS. With that said, let's start. Sharpening has been an option found in NVIDIA's control panel for a number of years. It's obscurely worded, to be sure. Essentially, this was an upsampling feature based on Lenchos, implemented on the driver level, and built on the same building blocks as the upscaling technology, therefore, in AMD's FSR. I want to make it clear, though, that while the two are based on Lenchos, AMD did perform a number of customizations for FSR. For both the first pass, which is the upsampling portion of the process, as well as the second, which handles the sharpening, AMD did a lot of tweaking. Again, I've gone over this much more extensively in my video, which was a collaboration with AMD, but you can find that, of course, linked in the video description. But the one plus of NVIDIA's solution is that it's technically available regardless of the game. It was a driver-level toggle then and enables any game to run at a lower internal resolution and then upsample to a higher resolution which you want to output. So, you could set a game to run at 1080p and then upsample to 1440p. If you wanted, you could even get fancy, super fancy, and create custom resolutions for upsampling. So, enter the press briefing from NVIDIA where the company wanted to discuss a couple of things. The first is deep learning super sampling, specifically an update which brings it to DLSS version 2.3. We'll get more into that in a moment, as well as a new take on the much ignored sharpening feature, now dubbed NVIDIA Image Scalar NIS. NVIDIA believes that DLSS is a more visually accurate upsampling technology, but they believe NIS is more accessible, I suppose. To put it another way, it can run on a larger suite of software, pretty much every game actually, and with a huge range of NVIDIA graphics cards. The technology takes the previously hidden sharpening feature and updates it, and makes it much more intuitive to use. I asked during the press briefing whether or not the tech still uses Lenchos as its algorithm and what changes were made to it, but I wasn't given a direct answer. Instead, I was it was heavily implied Instead, it was heavily implied that yes, it was still Lanchos, but what modifications over the older implementations there were wasn't clear. It does, though, according to the documents which were sent to press, still use a two-stage process, upsampling, then sharpening, and you can adjust the sharpening amount, more on this in a moment. But the broader view, and perhaps most importantly though for users, is this option allows you to run upsampling on virtually any modern NVIDIA graphics card, 
To be clear, this means Maxwell or later, due to driver support being pulled from Kepler and earlier architectures. AMD too have uh, now pushed Polaris to be the oldest supported architecture, so unfortunately that's just kind of the way of things. Also, you don't need any plugins. Wonder if there's any support for the specific game that you're trying to play. It will basically work regardless, which is pretty damn cool, at least in my opinion. We'll talk specifics on visual settings in a moment, but another interesting announcement, a variant of this work, i.e. not the implementation found in the control panel here, is made available to download in essentially an open source format. This means that you as a developer could go in, modify the code and implement it into your game or other project. Well, this also seems to work on consoles too, according to Nvidia and of course competition cards. I did follow up with which consoles would be supported and I was told that it was modern consoles basically, but naturally this does lead to the obvious thing of developers really being the ones who choose to implement which technology. Reading between the lines, and I stress this is not NVIDIA's official word on the subject, it's almost certain that the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X would support it, and I theorize that the Switch would as well because it's based on Tegra. So yeah, I mean, it's Maxwell based at the end of the day, so I suspect that it would run just fine. Anyway, DLSS, and for that matter, Intel's XCSS, have the benefit of being temporal upsamplers, compared to a spatial upscaler such as uh, AMD's FSR technology or indeed NVIDIA's own NIS. On the surface, they may appear to do the same thing. They take an input resolution, say 1080p, and then spit out a higher resolution, say 1440p. But unlike a spatial upscaler, DLSS uses neural networks to be able to have a better understanding of what's being upsampled, in other words, what to do with certain visual details. For example, a skybox or a character's hair, a car, other elements in the scene need to all be handled slightly differently. Furthermore, it brings a lot more to the table in terms of data, because, well, it has the data in the form of previous frames of animation which have been rendered by the graphics card. It can keep them basically in a buffer. So if you're targeting 60 or 120 FPS or higher, a new frame is spat out rather quickly, every 8 milliseconds ish if you're hitting 120 hertz. This means that most stuff in a scene hasn't really moved too much in position from frame A to B, therefore neural networks have a lot more data to improve image quality. I'm sure you know by now, but neural networks are trained, and we run the train code on our home graphic solutions. NVIDIA makes DLSS available to us with versions or iterations if you prefer, each version improving its visual quality as the neural network gets better at recreating an image closer and closer to native resolution. NIS though can be enabled with two methods. The first is NVIDIA's control panel, and these, like many other settings, are found under Manage 3D Settings. You'll see Image Scaling, and here, if you enable it, you can adjust the sharpening amount, and if you want to see if NIS is enabled with the overlay indicator, this just pops a small bit of text in the top corner which reads NIS. You'll see some of this in our video. The second way to enable NIS is through GeForce Experience. You might need to go to your GeForce Experience settings and enable experimental features if you don't see this, though by the time this video pops up, it's probably in a stable release candidate. Anyway, under the uh, settings of a GeForce Experience, you'll see Enable Image Scaling. You toggle it on, and then you can have GeForce Experience basically set this globally if you desire, along with the scaling amount. You can also further adjust sharpening. Again, we'll talk about sharpening in just a moment. You could also choose, of course, to do this on a game-by-game -game basis. You simply enable image scaling with one of the previous methods, and then you launch a game, choose a resolution, and then it will output to the appropriate resolution for your monitor. A quick note about resolutions then. When you choose quality or performance or any other quality setting with AMD's FSR or NVIDIA's DLSS, you're actually choosing the input resolution which is used as the base to upsample from. For NIS though, you're quite literally just choosing the resolution in game. When NIS is enabled, more custom resolutions appear in the game's options such as 1662p. 
you can see a nice graph here of how AMD's FSR and Nvidia's NIS compare in pixel counts. Focusing on sharpening though, I would suggest that you use the built-in toggle, Alt F3, to allow you to adjust the sharpness filter on the fly. I personally find the default value of 50% way too harsh, but of course this does depend on personal tastes, the game you're playing, distance you are from the screen, resolutions, and a lot of things, particularly the personal taste thing. As for quality comparisons of various technology, well, you've already seen a few throughout this video, including some of NVIDIA's. I decided to take some of my own and run a couple of benchmarks. I'm planning to do more extensive work on this with other projects, so consider this a pretty early preview. Starting out with DLSS versus NIS, I think that the quality difference really does speak for itself. YouTube compression isn't really the best friend NIS. It basically suffers from temporal artifacting, and of course this is exacerbated by lower resolution inputs. We can also see a number of these problems rear their head in FSR, though to my eye FSR does seem to have a slight edge in image quality over NIS. But again, Native and DLSS both win out, particularly when objects are in motion or for finer detail. For quality comparisons, we also tested at 1440p. Again, our results were gathered with an RTX 3080 Ti, a card with enough grunt to push pixels at 4K outputs to be sure, but for gamers targeting 1440p, you will of course experience much lower pixel counts, leading to quality differing significantly versus 4K. Again, we'll investigate this further to be sure, but given the lower output target resolution, this naturally means that the input resolution for our upsampling solutions is also lower too. Spatial upscalers fare worse with lower resolution inputs, and temporal artifacts are more pronounced compared to what we saw but 4K. If you've the choice and you are targeting a lower resolution, personally I choose DLSS for obvious reasons. If though FSR or NIS are your only options, then quite simply try to go for the highest quality mode you can without adversely affecting your frame rates. I don't want you to misconstrue what I'm saying. DLSS is still not perfect, but the technology is still pretty new in the grand scheme of things, and it is pretty impressive how fast it's evolving and learning. It'll be very interesting to see how both it and Intel's XCSS manage to handle graphics in two, three, four, five years' time. As for benchmarks, just like our captures, we ran them at 4K on an RTX 3080 Ti. We had to use a separate capture rig too. NIS, as I mentioned earlier, doesn't capture correctly with shadow play, so we figured we might as well use this for the benchmarks as well. Performance is trickier to quantify. FSR and DLSS, and also XESS, all have different quality modes. These essentially adjust native resolution the game is rendered in, and of course that uh, is then outputted to whatever resolution you desire. NIS, though, you simply set the internal rendered resolution and you're good to go. But yeah, with NIS, it's fair to say that higher quality modes just look closer in visual quality to DLS's lower settings. I decided that, yeah, the best thing to do here would just be to grab a bunch of benchmarks with different settings and different uh, upscalers for you guys. To be brief, though, about the... Um, press brief, NVIDIA would like you to think of DLSS as the best option for quality, I'm sure, but NIS as the alternative for, say, a Pascal owner, or for games which don't support DLSS. We'll be covering this more extensively soon, but it is intriguing, if not somewhat of a predictable thing for NVIDIA to do. Frankly, I probably would have done the same thing if I were NVIDIA, given much of the groundwork for NIS was already in place. It just makes an awful lot of sense for them to get a bit of a PR win. Remember, AMD is not done with FSR either. There's a reason that the company is calling it FSR 1 and not FSR final version, which we can never ever improve or change. But now the other update. NVIDIA did a brief rundown of some of the big changes over DLSS 2.2. Now we've hit 2.3, there are a number of visual improvements. For example, we see motion vector usage improving. So for an update released in Cyberpunk, you'll benefit from this if you download the newer drivers. There's this ghosting and better image quality, particularly when you're driving faster. Previously, this algorithm essentially 
just couldn't keep up and then resolve the image correctly. And now, uh, well, it can. Doom Eternal is yet another game which saw an upgrade, with earlier DLSS versions having embers create inaccurate looking trails. They kind of look like a comet, I suppose. It didn't look awful, but it was certainly not accurate. Honestly, if you didn't know what it looked like, if you hadn't played the game in native resolution, you may not have noticed, particularly if you're trying to convince a demon that its ass is a great place for your chainsaw to reside, but with any visual quirk, you will notice them eventually, and they can become rather bothersome. So here, NVIDIA fixed the issue. And now we have realistic looking embers, rather than this kind of weird looking comet type of effect. Oh, and small note, unfortunately I didn't have uh, saves available um, on Doom Eternal or Cyberpunk where I could have shown you guys this myself, so I'm just using NVIDIA's footage here. Oh boy, there's a lot of stuff to process with all of this, isn't there? It's hard to deny that the industry is going to change a lot over the next couple of years, not just because of upsampling tech, but Intel getting involved in GPUs and just so many different architectures on the CPU side of things, GPU side of things. And just in general, I feel that games are going to change in even the way they're designed with things like SSDs becoming more prevalent, direct storage and so on and so on. Basically, the amount of computer processing we're going to need to really allow open worlds and these rich environments to be created is going to increase exponentially, particularly as ray tracing is becoming just synonymous now with AAA game development. Getting back to the point somewhat though, XDSS will also launch alongside Intel's Arc series of GPUs, and its claims are impressive, including of course the ability to upsample from just 1080p all the way to 4K, much like Nvidia can. Which one comes out on top in terms of quality is really, well, who knows? And it's hard to deny that NVIDIA are not just going to be sitting on their laurels. I've already discussed quite in depth recently of what I've been hearing about DLSS3 and also AMD's FSR uh, 2.0, just to be clear. It's going to be a very interesting journey going forward. I feel, though, that the industry is going to benefit heavily in the long run, and I'm super excited to be honest with you just to see what happens from team green team red and also team blue it's going to be an absolute fascinating journey i feel i will also be curious how nvidia responds not just in terms of updates to their technology but also in public and uh, i mean for example for pr statements and so on and so on it'll be very interesting actually to see that across the board from amd nvidia and intel without any question the NIS announcements that we've gone through here are not huge revelations in NVIDIA's own technology. They still use essentially Lanchos, but I do think they have scored a bit of a PR win, and I do think it's quite cool that it is basically a driver-wide toggle and doesn't need to be included in a games developer's toolkit. Basically, it just works, if you forgive me using the term. I'm quite curious to see how all of this evolves over the next while, just to repeat myself. And with that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, then you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video, of course, and also subscribe to the channel. Um, hopefully you're finding the audio quality okay. I'm, uh, well, messing around with a new microphone and stuff, so things are still quite early on with this testing. But uh, yeah, let me know how you find it. With that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.